That's fine. Okay. Because a lot of people, including myself, have not seen it yet. Yeah, that's cool. I don't see nothing. Okay. I mean, I don't care, but, you know. Okay. Hungarian Grand Prix. So you're just going to kind of look out for the drivers looking like they're going to make some mistakes or like if they're going to get penalties or something like that? Yeah, I'll do that and just kind of bounce around the best I can and I'll be here for whatever you need me for. If I see something cool. interesting, I'll jump in or whatever. All right, cool, yeah. I will. Uh, we, we can go back and forth. We can do whatever we want, you know. Whatever works. UNF1, round six. I think I got everything. Broadcast live in three, two, one. Just give me one second, I'm posting links. Do you have your stream up? Yes, sir. Welcome everyone to the Hungarian Grand Prix for round number six of the UNF1's championship running season here today. Today we are here around the Hungarian Grand Prix located in Budapest, Hungary. 14 turns make up this 4.381 kilometer track and two DRS stones are added in to encourage more overtaking. Overtaking spots will be down into that deep turn one that's almost like a hairpin and also down into that second DRS straight which will end up into that turn two, turn three section. So we're definitely going to see a phenomenal race, not just for overtaking but for no phenomenal strategies, um, just stuff around the race itself. So really looking forward to this. McLaren have 11 victories for any constructor for around here in the real-time Formula 1. And Lewis Hamilton, I do believe, has 8, uh, just making that at the Hungarian 2020 Grand Prix. So uh, for real-time Formula 1, we have a lot of history to be made there. But here in the virtual world, we also have a lot of history to be made with lots of drivers looking for that crucial uh, good championship advantage. We know Freddie Too Real, who has pole position at the moment with the 115.118. Uh, he has three wins under his belt already for the first season here. And, uh, yeah, we're only on round six, so could he get that fourth win and extend his championship lead? I'm Broomhandle914, joined by Travis for today's UNF1 round number six at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Travis, how are you feeling going into this race? We're just about nine minutes into qualifying. Uh, how are you feeling about qualifying, where the driver is going to end up, uh, and what it comes into uh, driving around here for the track. 
Well, I'm excited to see what Freddy's got. He missed last week. I don't know if he knew that or not, but he missed last week, and we had added Johnny R95 last week as well. So those guys have been super fast all week in our little uh, practice rounds we've done throughout the week. Pepsi has always been fast, so I would assume those will be our top three. McLaren has a huge, huge advantage in our at our constructors' points, so it'll be nice to see if we can get a racing point up there with them, maybe contend a little bit. Um, like you mentioned before, my favorite part of this track is the DRS zone into turn one. That's where I like to pass virtually in my little virtual world. <laughs> so I expect to see a lot there. Yes, you're absolutely correct. That turn, uh, that, that DRS straight that goes down into about turn one and then that turn two DRS straight as well. Absolutely phenomenal overtaking spots. And honestly, I got to say as well, this track has got to be my favorite overtaking spots. I don't know about you. This is one of my favorite places to just make overtakes that feel good. I remember making an overtake, I think it was, um, ooh, I don't remember which league it was at, but it was turn 11 I made the overtake, I went around the outside, and it was just a fun place to make overtakes. I don't know if you have that same sort of uh, feeling when it comes to Hungary, uh, about overtaking and about uh, just getting good lines out of each corner. Uh, what's your thoughts on all that, actually? The interesting part about this course for me is whenever I do make the passes, the way that the track sets you up, I don't know if it's the camber or the layout or what it is about it, but it, when you make these moves here, it almost feels like you're racing for real, if that makes sense. You know, some of it the does. other tracks we have, we race on this game, like when I'm at Melbourne and I'm making passes, like it always feels artificial. Like I'm really aware that I'm on a sim. I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's so interesting that it is like that. Uh, I mean, like that sort of thing where it's like, you feel you feel different circuits and you're mentioning that hungry you feel like it's more real life and then australia the melbourne circuit um that feels a little bit more virtual i totally get what you mean there and i have the exact same thing um i even feel like belgium is something that is also part of me um even like italy i feel like it's a, it's a real circuit right. um, i think what makes hungry very special as well is that you're able to ride some of these corners that normal f1 drivers ride uh and some of the circuits like Austria is mm -hmm. a little bit different because it's a little bit different layout uh, so it just kind of ha happened to be like that um, but yeah I totally get what you mean well coming into seven minutes of qualifying Pepsi Freak in that Ferrari car just went second fastest a very quick lap by him a tenth down look at the qualifying times already first and second just split by one tenth of a second that is quick and you're also mentioning early on that racing point I think you said Johnny um, he wants to get that racing point team further up in the championship because I do believe they sit six with 33 points uh, just behind Williams. Uh, but you were mentioning that there are some of these new drivers coming in, Johnny in particular, and they're looking pretty fast. And look at that lap time. He's on medium tires, and he's still in contention for pole position. What's your thoughts on all that? Well, Johnny's come in. Him and Toss my salad are really quick in the racing points. We saw that last week, although uh, Toss Massad had a little bit of an issue at the end of the race and ended up dropping out of the points. But it's been, we've had some issues with some LLP issues, which is our point system, and that's why we see these new racers. It's nothing else other than that. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, yes, you're absolutely correct. Sorry? Go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. You're right. Yes, the two racing points are looking really fast. You're mentioning that Johnny and Toss My Salad, both two drivers that are new to the league. Uh, sounds like I, I didn't I, I didn't see the last race, uh, but you said they just came in uh, about a week ago uh, for the last race, and now they're in the two racing point t in team cars, and they're sitting third and fifth. One of them on those medium tires. It seems like Johnny has a little bit better of an advantage um, in third place right now, and he's just about. Uh, about six tenths behind Pepsi Freak, if my math is correct. Uh, so really looking good. And he goes oh. pole position. <laughs> he had to come out and get loose on the mediums before he went to the softs. That was that was the strategy. That is a great strategy, and you're absolutely correct. That's kind of how that works out. Uh, Johnny is on pole position at the moment with a 114.7. That's a tenth quicker than Freddy. Uh, and you were mentioning earlier on that medium tire, he just went out on that, kind of get loosed a little bit, uh, kind of getting used to the circuit. Now, guys, that's kind of how it works uh, with some of these drivers, especially a circuit like this that is very demanding over uh, where you want to place your car and stuff like that. So it's good to go out on that medium or hard compound tires even 
uh, to kind of get used to the circuit and uh, kind of get your setup all working correctly. Of course, I do believe Park Found My Rule is on, so you can't change your setup, but you know what I mean there. Right. Uh, so now it looks like Johnny's goes pole position. And going back to last week, I'm excited to see what Cross Tommy can do in the Haas. He had a really, really poor run of luck. He ended up getting in an accident like two or three laps in, DNF'd, mm. ruined his day, but he had really, really quick times in qualifying last week. So I'm interested to see what he can do in the Haas. It is going to be interesting to see, and you were mentioning he had a very uh, unfortunate weekend uh, last time out, so hopefully he can make sure that he doesn't make that same mistake or uh, make that same incident and uh, hopefully gets a good result around here. Uh, I got to say, this driver is really fast, and I don't know him very well. Um, he's just kind of come into some of my leagues that I'm in, and uh, I got to mention Mushroom Cup real quick because I was racing with this guy around this very same circuit, and I was trying to catch him every single lap, and he was that fast, and I, I catched him on the very last lap, but unfortunately could not overtake him. Uh, so unfortunate for me, but fortunate for him. So that just proves right there that this guy's got a lot of pace, and I mean, like, He's on medium tires, and he's one, he's a 116.1, and he's in the mix of those soft tire runners. So he's looking fast. Now he's on a soft run, and he's just invalidated the lap. Man. Oh, that's super unfortunate. Well, let's see if he goes out for another run. Do you think he has time to go out for another run of the track? Probably right now, actually. Yeah, he's got enough time to do it, but, you know, if he's anything like me, once I've invalidated a time, it kind of sets in the back of my head a little bit, especially on that turn, and a lot of times I'll go into that turn slower than I normally do to make sure I don't make the same mistake, which, of course, throws off my lap time. Well, hopefully he doesn't make that same mistake, and, I mean, you're absolutely correct. I mean, once you make that mistake, it just ruins the lap, and then you kind of come off of that, and hopefully... Uh, make sure that you don't make the same mistake again. So hopefully Cross does not make that mistake uh, when it comes to that section of the track. I'm going to ride on board with him and see how his lap goes, goes around here. He's already coming down into turn 4, turn 5 right here. He's looking pretty nice and tidy here. Uh, so we'll see how that lap progresses uh, later on. But it looks like Freddy Two Reels is coming around a final corner. Do you want to do the onboard of him or do you, wanna meet, do you want me to do it? We can switch off or something like that? Yeah, it's fine. I'll ride with him. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to call it? So he's down in the turn one, comes out, nice line here. And this is, and he hits his DRS zone coming under the Rolex bridge. And this is where I did a really good job of missing a breaking point in a, in a race and going off in the gravel pit. But Freddie's got this thing laid down. He's in third right now. His Pepsi Freak ran a 114.5. That is quick. That is very quick. So just for a, a relative thing where I am, I'm usually in the 116s, like the lower 116s. So these guys are way beyond me. I think I gotta agree with you. Those soft tire runners, I mean, the drivers that are already up into the 114.5, that's incredible by Pepsi Freak to already get up there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 116s, I think I gotta say that's probably where my pace is as well. Um, and I think a lot of drivers have to say that. So we are at the top performance here, guys, for all these guys. And I mean, that, that is a very quick lap by Pepsi right. Freak. And a, and a very nice grid here, too. Look, top three, that's, they're just separated by about four tenths of a second. That's what you like to see. Freddy's invalidated, so right now he's going to sit in third, at least with this lap. Well, let's see if he can maybe make another move or another um, lap here. He's going to probably start that lap. I'm going to take it for the start here. Uh, Freddy coming down into that heavy braking zone of turn one. Break at the 100-meter mark as you want to get a nice exit uh, into this corner so you can line up your perfect match for uh, the DRS straight. Very short DRS straight as you break right after that 50-meter mark for turn number two. Ride that curb as much as possible. Flick to the other side of the track as you come through turn three. Nice and flat out through there. Uh, get as much as you can on that curb. Difficult part of the section. My, my most difficult point of the entire section, i got to say. Turn four, these guys do absolutely perfect to continue on with that. Turn five, another place where you want to ride that curb as much as possible. Make sure you don't go off the track. Break at the 50 meter mark as you hit that curb for the chicane of turn number uh, 6 and 7. Turn 8, you want to shift down to about 4th and 5th gear for both of these uh, turns. Most of them, oh, is he an invalidated lap? That might be over for him, uh, but maybe we can ride on board with him uh, for the rest of his lap. And Johnny's still on a fast lap, too. Let's see if he can get a good lap in that racing point car. And you were mentioning early on, and I was mentioning as well, uh, that he's got pace as well, 114.7. And, I mean, he's only 10th behind for Pepsi Freak, so I think he's got... He's probably the most likely driver to get pulled. What's your thoughts on that? 
Oh yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I think Freddy's ran out of time. Sir Vapor just put up a 115.4 on his last lap. He's come back out for an out lap, but we haven't seen Sir Vapor uh, put up a time that can kind of rival these three up front in the 114. So Johnny can do it. The question is, can he hold it together and, and not run out of gas here? <laughs> Well, let's see what happens here. I mean, he's just coming through Sector 3 now, and I mean, he's looking pretty fast. I can't tell if he's using uh, that year. Oh, a little Very bit of lockup. Out. What's this lap going to take him, though? He's around the final corner at turn 14 now. Nice exit out of that corner. What's his lap going to take him? 114.7, he stays a 114.7. That lockup definitely hurt him a little bit. Took a couple tenths off for sure. I think it did. I think that's probably why he couldn't improve on the lap. Probably because of that, that lockup. And you guys might be thinking that just a small lockup would be fine, but every single tenth counts. So that's the way it goes. Um, let's say Sir Vapor is starting a lap here, but I'm surprised. I said he's an out lap, and the time is still going on. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Is it a glitch on my screen, or do you have this as well, where it says he's on an out lap? But he's, the time has already run out, so he can't put in a fastest lap. I have the same thing you have. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, it looks like there is a very strange glitch or something like that that is coming on. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It looks like Sir Vapor is on a fast lap now as he comes through turn five. Let's see if he can get a fast. Ooh, oh, and that's going to be it. That's going to be it. <laughs> and he's retired, it looks like. He was a tenth up through the first sector, too. He was definitely going to improve. I think he just hit that white curb to the right of him, um, and that's the reason why he spawned that curb. Uh, talk us through that real quick, Travis. Uh, when you're coming through that turn, you're a fellow racer, I know. Uh, when you're coming through that turn, what happens? What, what do you have to try and make sure you don't do? I mean, like, what, what, do, you, what do you not want to do, what Sir Vapor just did? Right, well, you always want to stay off that white part. You can touch it a little bit, but it's so easy if you clip. I mean, just a quarter of an inch, a couple of millimeters too much. It wants to kick the back end around, so you completely go straight, straight into a 180, basically like he did. And it's, it's easier than it looks. And the first time I did it, it surprised me because I didn't expect it to lose grip like that quick. So you want to hug it as much as you can. You want to hug that line as much as you can. That's where all the speed is. But it's, it's just a slight margin of error, and it's like that. That's what you know. That's what makes you quick is riding that fine line but as you saw it's easy you just clip it a little bit and there it goes your dnf for the session i think that's why hungry a lot of drivers actually have a fear over it is because of that white curb that is not just in turn five but in a few other corners like uh right. the last the turn 13 i do believe and turn two uh both have those white curbs alongside turn five so i think that's where uh you have to be very um Concerning, you know, you have to think about where you're going and stuff like that. But also, you mentioned that you have to ride that line, uh, but just make sure that you don't hit that line because that's where people go fast is that line uh, right there next to the white curb. So I think it's all about just trying to make sure that you're very consistent with your lap, making sure that you're just not hitting that white line and getting away from that. And we saw the same right before we started the stream. Fretchy did this exact same thing on his out lap on that exact same turn, spun it, bend it, lost the whole session. He's going to start second to last or third to last because of that. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of drivers have been having some issues, as you mentioned. And I mean, not just in the qualifying of the stream that we saw, but also earlier on before we started the stream. So maybe some drivers are going to start struggling. We'll have to look out for that for the race. Uh, maybe we'll see some action when it comes down to that. But before we get into our formation lap, I hopefully there will be a formation lap. Uh, I hope there will be. Uh, but before we get into the race, all that sort of thing, strategy. We got to talk about that. Uh, just a short little um, s few seconds of strategy talk. What is the strategy for around here, Travis? What is the best tire to go on when it comes down to our 36 laps, I do believe? My, my preferred strategy, I like to start on mediums and finish on soft because I like to charge hard at the end. But almost everybody else I race against seems to go softs first. So... It's personal preference. Me, I like to end fast. That is a good thing to think about. I mean, I didn't actually think about that. I mean, finishing on the fast tires at the end. Oh, the formation oh. lap is no. The, the, <laughs> no the formation. Race is, this, the race is going. Five red lights out, and away we go. And a bad start, actually, for that Mercedes at the back. Did not expect the formation lap uh, to 
I was expecting the formation left to be there. Sorry, guys. Uh, but the racing point has gone ahead down into turn one. The Ferrari looks to have missed out on that opportunity, unfortunately. Sir Vapor and Freddy battling out for third place at the back. Looks like a nice, clean start for everyone. Looks like they're the Red Bull uh, at the back of the p uh, at the back of the field. Looks like Freddy is still side by side with that Williams and Sir Vapor. Ooh, almost losing it as well. But it looks like Johnny leads the race from Pepsi Freak, Freddy, Sir Vapor, Cross Tommy, and it looks like the Ferrari of Paulo Frost. Says, Ooh, Freddy Ooh. goes for the overtake. An Alonso Schumacher move. This is Freddy. It looks like he's side by side with the Ferrari as it comes down into turn six. Well, that was a hell of a move by Freddy there to move into second place. That was brave. You don't see that very often. That was a very, very exciting maneuver. I, have, I, I haven't seen that maneuver for quite some time. There's a Williams, I do believe. Uh, that is deadly, I do believe. He's off the track with a wing damage. Oh, oh. oh that's in the wall as well. That might get us a safety. Oh, he's... He's spitting it back around, and again, easy to lose it there as well, especially when you're in traffic. Well, it looks like he'll get back on track, and uh, you are right. He was uh, trying to get the car back on track. Uh, he has eventually done that. He's going to have to pit, though. Uh, but coming down into turn one for the first lap of the race, Johnny leads the way from Freddy after that amazing move. Pepsi freaked down the third. Did he have a problem with the start? I did not see exactly uh, how that Ferrari went. Did you see exactly... Uh, what happened to Pepsi Free? Because he's now down to third from pole. Uh, he had a little spin of the tires. Johnny got a really good jump and had the inside line come in the turn one. Pepsi kind of let him have it. I think he was thinking like, well, you know, it's the first lap, first turn. We don't need to send anybody out to the shadow realm. Let's keep it nice and tight, and we'll be here at the end of the race. Very interesting. I think that's how it kind of works with some of these guys. You have the problems with tire spin um, and all these sort of things, you know, so... Um, yeah, thanks so much, Travis, for letting us know what happened to Pepsi. Uh, it looks like he is down to third, but he's still in the race, guys. I mean, he's still in the race. What do you think can happen, Travis, with Pepsi Freak? Do you think he can retake that lead from Johnny and Freddy? Yeah, he's shown enough pace to do that, and he's shown enough skill to make those moves without causing an incident. Um, the question is, is he going to get some time penalties for pushing too hard, which I've, we've seen him do in the past? Mm. Very interesting. That is something to definitely consider. Time penalties. I do believe it is on strict, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yes, so the, the strict corner cutting, we're going to have to watch out for that. Some of these guys are going to get time penalties. You are mentioning, too, if they push too hard, they will have to, um, they, they will get a lot of penalties, and that could um, make that race uh, very uncomfortable for them. But anyway, we have a move for fourth place. Cross Tommy, now back in the action, has got up to fourth and passed Sir Vapor. Very nice move for the Haas driver. And uh, he covers the Williams, so uh, his hunted, the, the, the hunted driver behind him of uh, Sir Vapor can't get ahead. But it looks like uh, the Williams is trying to get back past, but there's just not enough room. As look at that. Looks like Freddy is pushing too hard. He's getting time penalties at turn four. You're absolutely correct. That's exactly what's happening. The turn four is probably what I think is the sketchiest turn in this whole race. You're going uphill, you're going full speed, there's really one line you can't pass, it's easy to mess up, it's it's a little, in real life I can imagine how terrifying it is, if you're really locked into the sim, it's, it's scary enough. I gotta say that's probably one of the scariest, I, I gotta say that's probably the most scariest corner on the entire track, and one of the scariest corners on Formula One because you're going up the hill, and there's so many curbs around there that yeah. you can't really turn very good, I gotta say. And they're and the curbs are like, if you touch them, they're gonna send you. Right. Such an interesting uh, concept it is, this turn four. A uh, very interesting type of corner sequence it really is. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have to definitely look at it take a look at that and I think it's also going to be the best or the, the worst spot I gotta say uh, to get penalties so a lot of these drivers will getting penalties uh, at that very corner Sir Vapor just made a move on Toss My Salad to get back into the top 5 you're absolutely correct that Williams the Sir Vapor did get up into 5th place so that's looking really good for the Williams team he's top 5 and that's really looking good uh, for him uh, you were also mentioning uh, I, of course I haven't watched really uh, many of the races before, so I do apologize for that, guys. Uh, but, Travis, you were mentioning that Sir Vapor was really, he was not showing his true pace in qualifying. Do you think he has maybe something deep uh, in deep underneath him that's saying, like, okay, I'm going to have a good performance in the race? Do you think he's going to unleash uh, that power he has uh, when it comes to here on the race? 
I'm sorry to jump in off topic. Well, Deadly Jamaican has crashed again, and he just did about three three sixties trying to get back on the track. He is having a tough go. It's, he is he, having a tough. Oh, he's fun he's again. Fun again. <laughs> I don't, he's, I'm sorry, it's not funny, but it is. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, okay, the thing is, is that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of spinning at the moment. Uh, it looks like he's going to be lapped by 12th place at the moment. And I got a feel for this guy right now. It looks like he's having some difficulty uh, with... Oh, he's, it looks like he has some difficulty with traction control. Oh, the Alpha went off too! Oh my goodness, oh. what happened? Javier and the Alpha went off. That's terrible, Javier. Javier's had some terrible luck this year. He's actually got some pace, but this is what happens to him every race. He seems to find... His trouble seems to find him. I was just recently watching a video about, uh, I think it was Nürburgring, uh, back in the 2000 race, 2007 race, sorry, um, and I think it was, uh, there was, I don't know if you remember that there was a crash, and, uh, I'll explain this, what's going on, viewers, uh, what, what we're talking about here, uh, there was a crash, I do believe it was at turn one, and it was raining, everyone was going off there, and they oh, all yeah. kept spinning off, uh, seconds after seconds after seconds, uh, kind of remind me of that, uh, with that 13th and 12th position. And to answer your original question about Sir Vapor, yes, oh, yes, he has a lot of pace. He, there's no reason he can't be top three or four in this league. He's very quick. But again, he's one of those guys that just seems to, to find trouble. And it's not anything that he's doing particularly. It's a guy behind him will miss a braking zone and rear end him. Um, a guy in front of him will basically cut him off and knock his wing off. That's happened at least once to him. So he's had some bad luck. But that's how it is with these online lobbies, you know, in, in these leagues. Sometimes bad luck just finds you. And who knows, the next five races... It might be yours, and you might dominate. That's interesting. I think uh, luck sounds like it's a big issue right there uh, with him just having some bad luck in races. I know exactly how that feels. Uh, a few leagues I've been in, uh, I just had bad luck after bad luck after bad luck just being tossed around uh, by uh, everyone around me, I guess, uh, with some crashes or something that happened, like someone crashed ahead of me, and then I just accidentally... accidentally uh, happen to be in in the mix as well. So it sounds like Sir Vapor may be relating to me um, as well. And probably a lot of drivers. A lot of drivers had some bad luck. And that's how it goes in Formula 1. That's how it goes in life as well. You have bad luck as uh, a lot of times. Uh, let's quickly talk about Toss My Salad at the moment. He's in that racing point car in sixth position. We haven't seen him much in this race. Haven't seen him really challenging these guys. But now he's starting to come into the mix as, as well. I mean, he, Sir Vapor earlier ago, just I think it was like lap 4 or something like that, overtipped this racing point, but now Toss My Salad is getting back in the action. He's all over the back of the Williams, and now that Williams ahead hasn't got any DRS. Do you think Toss My Salad is a big... Ooh, as everyone's diving in the pit lane, uh, but maybe we can talk about this later on, but do you think Toss My Salad is a very good, uh, likely opportunity for him to get a podium here? What's your thoughts on all that? Yeah, if he stretches out his his softs a little bit more, I think he'll be okay. He he seems like he's trying to settle into the race, which is what he did last week, so he, he's he's in the past, at least, he's looked like he's been pretty patient. Very interesting. Maybe he's a driver that just, just is kind of patiently waiting for everyone to make a mistake, and then he just kind of uh, slots in there uh, and makes that move. I've done that many times, so I do know how that, uh, <laughs> that makes it, you know. Uh, so maybe he's just waiting for his teammate to pit. I don't know. Let's quickly talk about strategy real quick. And we didn't really have enough time to talk about this earlier on. Uh, we'll probably bring this many times up in the race. Everyone's gone for a different strategy here. Pepsi Free, Cross, Tommy, and Sir Vapor, most of the drivers, that th those are basically the top drivers that did pit. Pepsi Freak and Sir Vapor have gone for the medium tires, but Cross Tommy has gone for the soft compound tires. What's your thoughts on this strategy here? What do you think are the difference between those three drivers, and what do you think is going to be the end result? Well, I think Pepsi is going to be faster than probably half the field on the mediums anyway, from what we've seen out of him in this league and other leagues. I'm not sure what Cross Tommy is doing. As we have a pass for the lead, Freddy goes on the inside into turn one. And For first place right now. Um, and on top of that, though, Freddy, Johnny, and Sir Pepsi, Sir Pepsi, <laughs> and Pepsi Freak all have a three-second penalty for uh, track limits. So just keep that in mind um, as we move yes. forward. But Cross That's Tommy, to know. I'm, I'm curious. Track I'm curious about his strategy on the softs. Does he know something that we don't know about I'm not these sure, tires? Actually, I mean, look at this babbling he's doing. He's much faster than Pepsi Freak at the moment, and I mean. 
He's, but those tires are going to degrade. Remember, I mean, like, look at this. We've already had, I mean, of course, these tires are used from qualifying, but only on lap seven, that's when the tires start degrading really fast, or lap eight around this area right here. So Cross Tommy won't have a lot of time to run those tires for. So I think you might be correct. I think he knows something that we don't know. Maybe his team is telling him, like, okay, is there some sort of strategy that maybe might be better, a plan Z, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's on plan so, C. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how that works out. But w yeah, what's, what's your thoughts on that? Also, the top two are pitting. We have the race leaders coming in the pits. Freddy did overtake mm -hmm. Johnny. That was a great move and also very crucial <laughs> when, it came, when it came to this pit stop phase. So I wonder what we'll see here. Do you think they'll go back to the mediums? They're going hard. Hards. Or just, or just Johnny's going hards. Freddy's going mediums. Ooh, okay, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I'm going to take this for a second about strategy. I have done this hards compound strategy of a soft to a hards to the end, and it actually has worked out. Now, it would have worked out, um, but there, I think there was a safety car, and so I actually did pit. It was like a few laps to the end. Uh, but it would have worked out. Honestly, it would have. Uh, so... Now coming into this, as I'm seeing Johnny pit for the hards, who was the race leader, is this the strategy that changes the entire race for this racing point driver? Does Did he make the right call, or is it the absolute opposite of that? And did he make the worst call and he'll have to pit again because those tires will degrade? And I mean, Freddy as well, what's your thoughts on him? His strategy is very interesting. He was the race leader, uh, and he will be eventually the race leader when everyone else pits. What's your strategy going on to this? What I'm always afraid of with the hards is what you just talked about, is getting a safety car. Because it, it completely eliminates your strategy at that point. And I, I would be worried about that if I was Johnny. That being said, this is the cleanest race we've had all year. It is so far. I mean, like, we're looking pretty good for a very clean race. And I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be really interesting. I'm kind of stumped right now because I... I don't know what's going to happen right here uh, right. with all these guys going for these different strategies right now. It's very curious, and this is probably one of my favorite spot, uh, parts about Formula 1 is the strategy calling in. So I uh, really like this at the moment. Uh, but let's quickly look at Cross Tommy, who's technically leading the Grand Prix. He has jumped everyone in the pit lane. Absolutely incredible. And why I say he's technically leading the race, because the Donsta and um, Austin here, they're both going to pit... And they're going to come out behind Cross Tommy, of course, and Pepsi Freak Freddy, uh, Johnny, Survivor, all those guys. They're all going to come out behind, and Cross Tommy will lead. So, honestly, now we come to another part of the strategy. Did Cross Tommy just make the move to pit on the softs for the race win? Do you think he could win this race with this strategy he has on? Because if he stretches these softs for as long as he can, gets a huge gap, then pits the mediums, he may even get ahead of Freddy when it, you know, all that sort of thing. What's your thoughts on all that? Yeah, the, the only way he can really win on a one stop on softs is to stretch him out and hope he gets a huge lead. Similar to Freddy, like if Freddy's going to stay on the mediums the whole race, even he needs to stretch that lead out because Johnny's going to be quicker at the end. So. I guess what I'm wondering is, are some of these guys planning on doing two stops? Do they think they can get such a big gap that they can afford to make two stops? I think a lot of these guys will be going for that two-stop strategy, and I think that's probably... Uh, most of these drivers, except Johnny, is probably going for the two-stop strategy here. And, uh, yeah, so, like, um... It actually, maybe Austin and uh, Donsta, I think they'll probably go for the one stop, of course. Uh, but yeah, Cross Tommy, two stop, I gotta say. Pepsi Freak Freddy will probably go for the two stop as well. This is gonna be interesting. I'm super interested to see how this works out. And this is gonna be a very, very um, interesting race when it comes not just down to strategy, but it comes down to the mindset of the drivers of what they're going to pit for and I think it's something that is interesting about Formula 1. Uh, but Cross Tommy did get past Austin there in that Mercedes car and uh, the Haas is up into second place in the race and now he's going to have he's going to start chasing after the leader now uh, the Donsta in that Red Bull racing car and what's also interesting too is that this is really help him out Austin's going to hold up Pepsi freaking Freddy as actually never mind Pepsi just got past uh, Austin here, so a lot, a lot of a battling going on as Freddy's looking to make the move, but this is going to slow down these guys quite a bit, and it's going to get Cross Tommy further and further ahead uh, when it comes to the strategy. 
Exactly. And sometimes when you're in the back, and I've done this before where I've been a little bit quicker than the guy in front of me, but I know we can, it's faster for me to stay behind you and not battle because both of us working together is faster overall for me, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And uh, I really do know what you mean. Because I mean, like, it's just down to getting that strategy right. And also, where are you going to play this, I guess? I mean, like, what? it's not just down to conserving the tires. It's also down to conserving your lack or your your um, driving style, I guess, mm -hmm. I got to say. And that's part of conserving the tires, I guess. Um, but it is an interesting subject. As, oh, Survivor's Ooh. out. Oh, man. That's a big crash for the, for the Williams, and that is... Oh, no. We were just talking about he's got super bad luck. <laughs> and that is him off the race. He's in the middle of the track. That's going to be definitely a virtual safety car so they can clean up that uh, all that track. So he's not had some good luck here today, yet again here at the Hungarian ring. So does this change if you're Johnny? Is this too soon to abandon your strategy, or do you stay on the hards? Well, it, this is going to be interesting because I think Johnny will probably stay in the hards. Uh, I think there's no course. I think the only two drivers that will be pitting is, uh, oh, not Austin's not is not pitting. Very interesting. Uh, Cross Tommy is pitting. Whoa. Okay. That's interesting. That is interesting. What is his tire? What, what do you think? It, what do you think his tire is going to go for? I was going to say Austin and the Donsta are probably the only ones that are going to pit, but it's actually Cross Tommy pitting. I would go hard. He's doing mediums. Can he take those meetings to the end of the race, though? Maybe he can. I couldn't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I could either because those tires... I mean, we're, we were talking about uh, Johnny. His hards, are they going to make it to the end of the race? But talk about strategy. Talk about tires last to the end of the race. Cross Tommy, mediums. I mean, the medium tires last about 15 laps if you're most... I mean, it depends on the circuit, of course. Uh, and your driving style, but uh, if you're being realistic towards the tire, uh, the mediums will probably last about 15 laps in this race, mm -hmm. and the race distance is not 15 more laps, so is he going, I'm going to say it, is he going to go for the three-stop strategy? Oh, there's no way. You think so? I mean, I guess he could, theoretically, yeah, it makes sense, but that is such a ballsy move. It'd be really strange, because, I mean, well, if he pit for the hards, it'd be definite two-stop. I think he could definitely last that, but mediums. I'm not sure if he can last that, and that's why I predicted the, the three-strop strategy, because I don't know if his tires are going to last, or the other option is, and tell me if you think you agree with this, um, Travis. Is he, is he betting on a safety car? Is he betting on a safety car kind of later into the race, and then he's going to pit for the soft tires while everyone else is going to pit, and is that his strategy? What do you think? You know, that might be, the, that might be it. That is, that's brilliant. I, I would say so, like, based off of what we've seen, in this league in the past, that's that's a smart move. Huh. I'm not sure. I think it's it's gonna be interesting to see how this works out because I've I don't know if you have dealt with this on a commentary or racing even. Uh I mean of course it happens, but not like predicted by the commentators or whatever. <laughs> a three stop strategy. I've seen I'm it, not sure. I've seen it happen where I'm driving, I see a guy switches over to hards, and I'm like, what is he doing? And then you realize he just hit the wrong button, but I've never seen somebody do it on purpose. Right, right. Very interesting. I don't know. This is going to be a really interesting race, guys. This is going to be super interesting. We'll have to see how this works out uh, with all these guys. And uh, Cross Tommy's strategy is going to be very interesting. He did pick up a three-second time penalty. Look at this, though. He's on um, Mifdon, I do believe that's how you pronounce his name. Sorry, guys. I'm not very good with pronunciations. Uh, but look at this. He's going uh, for the move. Look at that. Very beautiful. I thought he was going to try for the cut back there, but he didn't have enough drive coming out of the turn. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Do you think he's probably going to wait for this DRS detection point right here? I would step back. You don't want to... And again, talking about strategy... And I've seen people do this before, where they make the move too soon right here, actually pass the guy, then the guy they pass gets the DRS. Ah, you're absolutely correct. Uh, looks like Cross Tommy's going to go for the move either way, though. Uh, ooh, look at this. He's just going to be in the same situation again. Oh, but look at this. He's going to go for the move down into turn two. And you were talking about, I mean, like, is he going to wait behind? It doesn't look like he's going to wait behind. He's already made the move up to seventh right. place now.
So let's quickly look at how things have played out. The Donsta still leads this race, which is very interesting. He has not pit. He's going probably for the hard compound and tires. Um, Austin as well is on the same sort of strategy, I'm thinking. So I'm surprised what their strategy is going to be. Uh, Pepsi Freak is still in second place. Freddy's right behind him, though. And then Johnny's also kind of... I think he's waiting. I think he's being very patient here. And then also, the, um, Toss My Salad is also waiting for that strategy as well. I think he's just waiting for a nice strategy to go in for. He's going to be very patient as uh, both the Donsta and Austin are coming into the pit lane for both the respective teams of Red Bull and Mercedes. And they're going hard compounds. This is interesting. And those hards will probably last the end of the race. Do you think they can? What's your thoughts on that? For sure. He just got... 16, 15 laps out of the medium, so he should be able to get the hards out, but the question is is there enough time for him to make that up? I'm not sure it'll end up in a podium right. for him. And the racing points are sitting pretty for, for a double podium here because Freddy got another three second penalty for exceeding track limits. It looks like Freddy might be pushing too hard. You mentioned earlier on that um, if you push too hard, you're going to get penalties, especially like that turn four. Uh, and then I do believe turn at number uh, 11 as well. So maybe Freddy's pushing too hard. Let's quickly take the time, guys, to uh, just say, uh, sorry. Um, remember, guys, to subscribe to both channels. Uh, if you're watching on my channel, it's former Legiona, so make sure to subscribe and make racing content every single day uh, to series, to commentary, to weird challenges itself. Uh, and also subscribe to the UNF1 channel as well. They got commentary, they got content. Also subscribe to their Instagram channel uh, for both of us. Actually, we both have Instagram. Uh, theirs is UNF1 and uh, mine is Formula Jonah 4. I'll put um, a link to their YouTube channels and all that sort of thing. Um, in my comments below. Uh, but yeah, definitely subscribe to both the channels so you can see racing content, all that sort of thing. Uh, I will, uh, me and Travis will probably be continuing commentary uh, for UNF1, hopefully every single weekend. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. But just remember to do that, guys, because, you know, I hope you guys would stick around. And I'm also trying to get 100 subscribers, which will be uh, nice to get. I, I think I need like five more subscribers, so hopefully we can make that happen today. But uh yeah, so, uh, yeah, commentary has been absolutely phenomenal so far. Uh, Travis, thank you so much for joining me this far into the commentary. Um, everyone watching, continue on watching because this is going to be an absolutely phenomenal race to watch when it comes down to these final few laps, when it comes down to strategy, when it comes down to overtaking, and when it comes down to these drivers' mindset of what they're going to do because one little mistake we are talking about earlier on with qualifying and the white, that, that white uh, curb, one little mistake... Your car is gone, you're out of the race. And that's exactly what happens to Sir Vapor, who unfortunately is retired from the race. And the both of Williams teams are not looking good. Um, Travis, you want to quickly talk about the standings real quick uh, when it comes down to these round six. Uh, Freddie leads the championship. He's got a massive gap to Pepsi Freak. He already has three wins under his belt, so that makes sense why. And McLaren is also that huge gap. They have 121 points to the nearest driver, which is Red Bull, is 62 points. Very interesting. Um... Maybe could you give us some uh, uh, predictions of who's going to win the championship this year? Well, Freddie's got a huge lead, but Johnny and Pepsi have a chance to catch him if he, you know, makes a couple of mistakes and a couple of DNFs. There's no reason they can't sneak up behind him. The Constructor Series might be over. Brevin misses races every now and then because of his uh, real-life job, but Brevin is very quick, and he's had a couple of uh, podiums. He's been right there. He hasn't gotten a win yet, but he is fourth in the standings. He is two points behind uh, Pepsi Freak for second, so my my gut tells me we're going to see a McLaren winning a trophy. If it's not the the series trophy, it'll be the constructors' trophy. I think that would be absolutely incredible to see McLaren back on the top of the championship, especially for Virtual World, especially if you're here at the UNF1 Championship. Uh, I think that's probably the most likely option uh, because just how big of a constructor's gap these guys have to anyone else on the grid. 121 to 62 points. That's a massive gap. Uh, but yeah, and you were saying Bryven as well. Um, he, has, he hasn't been able to make a few of these races, but you were saying he's pretty fast, and I, I've seen him in a few leagues of mine uh, that he's got insane amount of pace. But look at this. we got Freddie moving for first place of the race into turn two, and it looks like he's made the move on the Ferrari of Pepsi Freak, and Freddie with those newer nine-lap old medium compound tires is ahead of the Scuderia Ferrari car. 
Pepsi did, a, Pepsi did a good job there of giving him space to make the pass, but also staying right on him to put pressure on him. Coming around the, through turn two there. That's good good racing, a good pass. That's what we like to see. I just don't think Pepsi uh, can catch up to Freddy at the moment. It's, oh, is that an Alfa Romeo off the track? That is. It's Javier. Uh, Javier off the track, and he's going to be right in the middle as well. Uh, across Tommy and the Red Bull behind as well. Um, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, I think Pepsi can't, uh, going back to what I was saying, guys, um, I don't think Pepsi can maintain his performance to keep up with Freddy. I mean, he's a quick driver, but he's on those tires that are a little bit more degraded than Freddy. I think he might have the opportunity to make the overtake, but I think he's just going to run out of track when it comes down to that end of uh, that turn one uh, hairpin. And also looks like Johnny just behind them as well. Now he's going for a very interesting strategy here. The hard tires will probably go to the end of the race. Now, what's he gonna do? Now he's sitting behind Ferrari and McLaren driver, but he's not catching up. But is he maybe not intentionally trying to catch up? Is he maybe just waiting for those guys to maybe make a mistake? He'll catch up, or is he just waiting uh, for those guys to probably hit and then he'll just take the, the lead of the race? Yeah, I think he's just sitting back and saving his tires. I mean, he's got 65% ERS right now. He's not even using his extra energy. So he's just sitting back, saving his car, saving his equipment to make his move. Very interesting. Yeah, he is just waiting for this battle. Uh, and I, I think you were, you were saying he's got a massive amount of ERS as well. So he's just waiting uh, for the right moment to maybe snatch the lead from the, uh, the leaders here of Freddy and Pepsi. Uh, that's the closest battle, actually, we do have on track for the lead of the race, uh, and actually not just for first and second, but for first and third as well as Pepsi Freak is into the pit lane. Very interesting. Now, so what's the strategy? Go oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, it's his second stop, so you assume he's going mediums, right? He can't... I guess he could he get 14 laps out of softs? He's going mediums. Yeah, it's the best option for him. And, uh, yeah, that's the only way he can do it, is the medium compound of tires, because if you went on the hards, you'd probably be just too slow and you'd run out of pace, you know. So the mediums are probably the best strategy. Do you remember if he started on the medium compound? I think he started on the softs, but my memory might be, um, right. correct. Yeah, he started on the softs. Okay. So, so that means that he doesn't have to pit again, because the rules say that if you start on the medium compound and finish on the same compound without changing to a different compound of tires, you will be disqualified from the race. So based off of that strategy, you would assume Freddy and Toss Masad will pit again before the race is over, and if that's the case, Johnny might end up winning this thing by four or five seconds. This is going to be super interesting, and I, I'm also curious to see where Cross Tommy comes into the mix as well, because he's on that interesting strategy that's, the mediums will probably not end to the end of the race, but it's going to be tight, guys, I don't know, and I mean, you were saying as well, based on that strategy that Prepsy Freak uh, went on uh, to pit for those medium compound tires, Freddy and Toss My Salad will also pit for another set of compound, but will it be the soft compound instead of the mediums? That's actually more of a realistic strategy. Do you think they could probably take those mediums for quite a bit and then maybe over the softs? Or maybe big gamble on a safety car? What's your thoughts on that? Well, at this point in the race, we're starting to spread out a little bit, so you're kind of losing the odds of a safety car unless a guy hits the white part and completely bends it. So my guess would be hang on as long as I can, and once I start falling off, maybe a couple tenths a lap, throw the softs on and just give it hell till the end. I see what you mean. Very interesting. Um... So, yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. And I think you are correct. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this this plays out, I guess. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I, I'm also trying to figure out how this is going to work out for Johnny as well because Kenny lost those hearts in the end of the race. And I think he, I think he can, but I think it's going to be... Because here's what I'm thinking, guys, and uh, tell me if you feel the same, Travis. Johnny's on those hard compound tires, but... I mean, they will eventually last in the end of the race, but when everyone pits, so like the battle of the Donsta, Pepsi Freak, Cross Tommy, all those type of drivers, are they going to catch up to Johnny in when t Johnny's tires start to grade? Because those tires that uh, the, the drivers I was talking about have much faster tires. So when it comes to the end of the race, will Johnny lead it or will he be passed by those drivers that have faster tires? 
That's and that's the million dollar question. If you're Johnny, it seems like he's betting on they won't, but I'm willing to bet there's going to be like a cross section of, of time where they seem to be at the same level, maybe with five or six laps to go, and then he's going to be hurting behind with those mediums behind him. Interesting, very interesting. So it's going to be a it's it's going to be a tight exit. It's going to be a tight entrance. Uh, no, sorry, it's going to be a tight fight for the race lead when it comes down to the race. So no one go anywhere because this is still a very, very exciting championship to continue on with. Do uh, you want to talk about Deadly Jamaican right now? He's sitting in 12th position, about a lap behind uh, most everyone right now. He's had a very difficult race, and not just him, but the team as well. Uh, they're sitting both one driver out and one driver last. Um, so Williams had a very difficult race here today. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, Deadly Jamaican hasn't looked comfortable at all um, on this track, and I wonder if he's just bad at the Hungaro ring, or if it's um, maybe he's just having a bad day. He just looks kind of awkward in the turns, like he's kind of going over the curbs a little too much. His braking points seem a little late, and he's going wide, so it, it just seems like he's uncomfortable, and not what I expected from him based off of what I know about him in other in other leagues. Very interesting. So maybe he just has a difficulty with this track. This track is very difficult, and it looks like he was having some issues with spinning as well. Right. That's caused him to be very hard, be, uh, very far behind. Uh, issues with traction control as well. Yeah, it's interesting. The traction control issue is interesting. I haven't seen that a whole lot. I wonder if that's maybe he doesn't race with that normally, or or if it's a different assist that he races with. Otherwise, I, I don't know. It kind of seemed like that's the vibe I was getting. But it's a tough day to be a Williams fan here in UF1. It definitely is, unfortunately. I mean, these drivers have had a very difficult race here today, of course. Uh, we're talking not just of Deadly Jamaican, but of Sir Vapor as well. Um, as the Williams seem to pick up another three-second time penalty for multiple warnings at, I'm assuming, turn four, I do believe that is. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, Sir Vapor's had a very difficult race as well. Did you see exactly what happened? Uh, we haven't really touched on that. Uh, but do you see exactly what happened at him? I think it was turn four. Did he spin in that curb and went straight in the wall? Did you see what happened? Yes. I did not. I saw it after he bounced off the wall and was in the middle of the, uh, the track as Freddie comes in the pits here. Um, but yeah, my assumption is he touched the white and lost it, and, and maybe we'll get some information from him post-race about what happened. We'll definitely have to see how that works out um, from the driver of Sir Vapor, uh, what exactly happened to him. But uh, let's quickly talk about that later on because Freddie Turail has come into the pit lane for the McLaren F1 team. He's come out in sixth place. And just behind the dawn stuff. This is interesting. I'm very surprised. Now, I'm also surprised why he's gone for mediums. <clears throat> right. Do you know why? I don't, unless all of his softs were used from practice and maybe they weren't fresh anymore. Um, that would be my guess, but it didn't seem like that was the case. I, I, I didn't get that. If, if that's what happened, I missed it. Very interesting. We'll have to see how that works out um, with Freddy and uh, see if his mediums can... Um, put up to the best pace he can. It looks like he's all over the Donsta as well, so this is going to be a nice battle to see. Also, we just want to quickly mention the two drivers we were mentioning during quality are uh, kind of new drivers to UNF1. They're sitting first and second at the moment. That's a very good performance. Of course, it probably might not finish like that because Toss My Salad is going to probably have to pit in this race, but uh, yeah, right now, it's celebrations for Racing Point. As Freddy goes down the inside. Wow, what a move by the McLaren driver. Uh, real quick, uh, I started to cut off what I was saying real quick and probably cut off your answer as well. Um, but Freddy, I'm going to say he's been the best overtaker this race. What would you say about that? Oh, yeah, he's good. He he knows when to push it and when not to push it. And he sets himself up well. Like, if that last overtake we saw coming into that turn, he set himself up. He kind of went a little bit high to make Donsta think he was going to the outside or just going to kind of push him out there. And he kind of pulled it in and made the nice dive. He timed his dive right, which is one of the hardest things to learn how to do on this game. Well, congratulations to Freddy. Uh, he's really had a good race here um, and has really uh, showed the performance that he deserves uh, here at UNF1. He's had a purple sector as well in sector one. He's flying out there, I got to say. On the mediums, no less. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that he's even faster than Cross Tommy. He was on those soft compound tires. Um, and so Freddy, he's got some mad pace right now in that McLaren team. And that's what he wants. And if he gets 
even if he can't win, fastest lap, an extra point, continue to push out his lead in the standings. I'm sure he at least wants that if he can't get the win or a podium. I think you'd definitely take that because, I mean, like, if you can't win, the best would be second and fastest lap. Or not even that, just even fastest lap and some good points, like fifth. Even where he is right now is a good points. Uh, and, I mean, coming out of this race, he'll, no matter what happens, if he retires from the race even, he will continue to lead the championship. That's how far he is ahead of anyone else. So he's really been consistent, not just this race, but the entire uh, six rounds of the season so far. And he just turned in the fastest lap, 117 flat, and he's catching Pepsi now. A couple of tenths a lap, so he should be on him within the next lap or two. Yes, he'll be very close to that Ferrari. Look at quick, he's catching up. And of course, Pepsi's on five level mediums, and this is his rival mostly the entire race. And of course, he's on fresh mediums, and he's been pushing a lot to catch up to Pepsi. So this is a battle, not just for fourth, but actually maybe even the race lead when everyone starts pitting and starts degrading those tires. So this is going to be interesting to see how this works out. And I don't know if you if you noticed, but Toss My Salad is on 16 lap old mediums. Yes, very I mean, interesting. So if, if like your to your point, if Freddie gets around Pepsi, he's gonna have way more pace than Cross Tommy and Tosma Sal. The question is, does he have time? Yeah, this is gonna be interesting to see how this works out because I mean like Toss is his tires are gonna start degrading. Oh wait, he's pit, he's pit. Uh, he took our advice. <laughs> <laughs> he took our advice to start coming in, but now he's going to, what tires is he going to go on? Probably softs. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, you have to go softs, right? At least push it. It's the only way you can catch everybody, and, and you might be able to steal that fastest lap away from Freddy as he goes on the softs. And he's serving yeah, a time penalty. Oh, sorry, glitch, my, my, my game, game glitched. Glitch. Sorry. No, it was mine too. Well, while our game glitched, Freddy made it around Pepsi Freak for third place. He did, so uh, our, the little glitch did stop us from seeing that stuff. Guys, sorry about that. Um, uh, but yeah, he did make it around. Did you see exactly, or did you find out exactly uh, where he made that overtake? I did not. When I clicked it back over, it had already, he had already made the pass. And I, was, and I was looking at the cross Tommy interval to see if he could make up 10 seconds and 7 laps. I was trying to do math in my head. I'm assuming he probably got past at turn 2. Uh, it didn't look like he got past at the, at the hairpin of turn 1. Uh, it looks like he maybe got past at turn uh, number two, uh, which is probably um, more realistic, uh, or more, I, I, I don't know the word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Freddy did get past that Ferrari. He's up in first pl or third place, sorry. Um, and he is flying. Now, he's got Cross Tommy up the road. And what's Cross Tommy's strategy now? Now, do you think he's going to take it to the end of the race? I mean... When he, if he pits, he's going to be way behind everyone. What's your thoughts on that? At this point, if I'm him, I'm riding it out. There's, you know, he has to make up two seconds a lap on you to catch you. And, oh, I'm sorry. No, he doesn't. He's right there behind him. Yeah, so mm -hmm. <clears throat> I looked at the interval the wrong way. If I'm him, I just I just stay out there and try to ride it out and see how many points I can get. You kind of put yourself in, that, in this position with your strategy. I just would ride it out. I mean... It is what it is. They still have to pass you. This is interesting. This is going to be super interesting to see how this plays out because, I mean, strategy is a big role here because it's played out into this way of this second place battle. I think I think we're going to get another one of these great overtakes by Freddy. And look at this. He's going to come right now, possibly. I'm going to ride on board with Freddy and see if he can make the overtake. Look how close he's coming in to cross. This is incredible racing from these two drivers. And I know how to, how good these two guys are. And actually, I remember, I think it was um, a few Mushroom Cup races that I've seen Cross Tommy, Freddy, and Pepsi Freak all race together uh, against many drivers in Mushroom Cup. And they've been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I've had a very hard time uh, myself trying to get past them as well. Uh, but anyway, it looks like Freddy's trying to get it past Cross. But look at this. He can't get past quite yet. He's going to have to go for the outside because Cross blocks him up. He's going to go around the outside but goes very wide in that corner. Cross is going to come back side by side with the Haas and the, and the McLaren car. Freddy has to back up. He's going to go for the outside line round the outside. Makes an incredible move. It looks like he's got better pace when it comes down to cornering speed. Side by side as it come down into turn three. Haas and the McLaren. Look, looks like the Cross Tommy got a little bit off the off onto the track. Looks like he's going to have to give up the position to Freddy. Freddy gets another time penalty. For, he does. 
so who knows where he'll end up now. That's at least two or three of those. He may even not even finish on the podium, honestly. That would be a tough result after the time and all the passes he's put in. Well, actually, I know this is very late into the race, but Travis, who would you say is your predictions for the top three real quick? Uh, probably Johnny, Freddie, and Pepsi, barring any crazy time penalties we can't foresee. Um, I know the Donsta has a penalty as well, so if all of those kind of fall in order, Toss My Salad might sneak his way onto the podium, or even Freccia. Freccia has been in 7th and 8th. Those two Mercs have been in the middle of the field all race. They haven't made too many mistakes, haven't gotten too many penalties, so those guys could end up sliding up into the top 5. I've seen crazier stuff. I've finished 7th in a race and gotten into the podium <laughs> on penalties before, so you never know. It but It does happen, and those Mercedes have, like you said, looked very consistent in the race, so they could sneak their way onto the podium. But look at this. Looks like Pepsi is going to go for the move on the Haas driver of Cross My Tommy. Look at this. He absolutely, absolutely had a phenomenal overtake. A nice switchback into turn one, uh, but just unfortunately could not get past. He's going to have to wait a little bit longer. And uh, yeah, this is going to be really interesting. I think I'm going to go for my predictions real quick. Um, Johnny, I'm going to say Johnny, Pepsi, Cross. That's my top three. because Only because Freddy, I've been seeing, he's got like 80 million seconds of penalties. Um... <laughs> So I'm assuming Freddie will probably finish outside the podium, but I could be wrong as well. Pepsi and Cross or Tommy or um, uh, Johnny could even have penalties. You know, all these guys could have penalties. Um, I'm not 100% uh, sure. And also you're mentioning the two Mercedes, Freccia and uh, Don there. They've been looking really consistent in this race. And also Noah, we got to mention him as well. I haven't really talked about the AlphaTari driver. Um, Noah is all over the back of Dawn right now, and this battle has actually been really nice. We haven't really seen uh, too much of it, but we are battling here uh, between Dawn and Noah right now for an eighth position with the Mercedes and the AlphaTauri right now. Uh, oh, and Noah goes a little bit off the track there, and he's going to have to um, lose a little bit of time there. Looks like Pepsi's going to try and make a move on Cross now, in down into turn one, making a little bit of a switchback almost, but that Ferrari looks to be just a little bit too far behind to make the move on the Haas car. Uh, Cross is right in the middle of the track, very well positioning and very good defending. He's having a lot of good defending maneuvers by Cross. Uh, they're very good. Ooh, not a lot of space there. Cross Ooh. is going to have to maintain third, and Pepsi's going to have to back off in that battle. Cross has been great, a great defensive driver. He's put on a clinic these last couple of laps. I know he got passed by Freddie, but like you said, his positioning has been really, really good. And that's that's a very difficult skill to have in any kind of racing, is, is blocking and maintaining your position. You're absolutely correct. I mean, like, you guys may be thinking that overtaking is the best thing, that's the most important thing, but actually, alongside overtaking, you have to learn how to defend as well, that is a very, very big thing, and actually, I gotta say, that's something that I just recently learned, and has really helped me out, uh, to be able to uh, defend a big amount, because I mean, like, once you defend, once you pick your lines, you gotta know how uh, you pick your lines, and that actually may save your race quite a bit, and maybe just won't look like you're just... Uh, giving up the position, but we have a nice battle for third place for third place at the moment uh, on these final uh, Three laps I'm gonna say uh, Pepsi's just too far away He's been having to make his move into turn two and he's just unable to make the move on the Haas of cross Still too far down as they come into down the hill there. It's it's He's having a really hard time getting around him And it's like I guess cross is using his ERS really well to keep him behind him and toss my salad as well. And that racing point car did get past the, the Donsta. Just wanted to quickly mention that. Uh, so he's got some pace as well, and we can't count him out. He's on soft compound tires, so he can actually close up to third and get third in this race as well. And he ran a 116 a few laps ago to have the fastest lap, so he's taking that from Freddy. Very interesting. So this is going to be very, very. Uh, it's going to be a very nice battle when it comes down. To these final few laps of race, and I mean, Pepsi's all over the back. I bet Cross is just uh, sweating right now, trying to figure out what to do uh, in this situation right now. Uh, but it looks like Don is trying to get back past Noah right now. Noah's doing really good. He's been defending very good, and like we were saying earlier on, uh, defending is the best thing. So Noah is really holding back Don here and uh, doing a very good job of it. And a big shout out to Noah. He had a tough race a couple of races ago. He caused a couple of safety cars. Uh, got a couple of series penalty points, but the last few races he has been clean, he has had good pace, and he stayed out of trouble. So shout out to him for a good rebound. Yeah, he's been doing really good, and uh, yeah, I mean, to 
get good points here oh, is something crucial. Is uh, ooh, what were you gonna say there? Pepsi almost broadsided across Tommy as he lost the back end coming through turn one. That's interesting. Uh, looks like Pepsi did uh, not get past cross. They, I think he said he had a little mistake too, so maybe that's why he could not. Right. Very interesting. Uh, but yeah, going back to Noah real quick, just want to say shout out as well. Um, Travis said shout out. I said shout out. So i uh, got to say the shout out to Noah uh, for doing a great job here today. Also, i got to give the shout out to Frecha as well, uh, or Austin. Uh, been doing a really good job uh, as well. I think he's he's been really, he, he brought me into this, honestly. And uh, I mean, I'm having a, f a fantastic time commenting with you here, Travis. And uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, you just gotta give the shout out for putting for him putting this all together, uh, for all making a YouTube, Instagram, all that sort of thing, and uh, giving everyone here uh, to race in this very, very uh, upcoming successful uh, league that it's gonna be. So, uh, really been a fantastic um, drive for him today to finish uh, in the top seven, which will be a good points for him on that Mercedes team. But Prepsy Fake is trying to, he's gonna get one chance to overtake Cross Tommy. Cross has got one chance to overtake or to. Um, stay ahead, so he's got to put the defending to use right now, so I think he's going to try and do that, he's in the middle of the track, this is really good for him as a, ooh, ooh. Bit of contact ooh. And Pepsi's going to wait to make, try and make the move this is crucial, do you think he can make the move quite soon, what other spot do you think he can make the overtake? He's gonna have to make it. He can make it coming into um, the hairpin at the end of at the end of sector three, right there at the end, would be my guess. You have to descend it though. But Cross Tommy is like Emmy-winning level defensive driver right now. It's so hard to defend and be safe at the same time, and he's done a really good job. He has done a very good job, and I think that's probably the best spot to make the overtake about uh, turn 14, turn 13 section. Speaking of turn 14, turn 13 section, Johnny just comes to the final corner. He's done everything today. He takes that strategy to win here today, the round number six of the UNA, of the, uh, sorry, UNF1 championship. An absolutely phenomenal, takes his second win here today for the championship. Freddy, we have no idea where they'll finish. Looks like second, but Cross Tommy's gonna come across the line to barely get. Pepsi is gonna take, oh wow. Toss the salad. Toss. Whoa. And Freddy stayed in second. That's incredible. Oh my goodness. Pepsi and, okay, real quick. I don't know if you see this right now. Pepsi and Cross. They were battling, battling for third place, but then Toss, he was just being patient and just waiting because he probably knew they had penalties, mm -hmm. and he got third without overtaking anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant strategy. He's really done absolutely incredible. Uh, toss my salad. Uh, third place, double podium for Racing Point. That's going to be great for the championship. Well, maybe we can get the top three in here for a quick interview. Uh, Travis, could you, could you do that possibly? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So our top three have done absolutely incredible, and every single one of these drivers have done absolutely incredible for the UNF1 uh, championship of F1 uh, season one here at the Hungarian Grand Prix. But the Racing Point team lifts the trophy, and it is our race winner, Johnny, that takes the win for the team, uh, double podium for racing points as their uh, other driver, Toss My Salad, takes third place in the race. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, Freddy as well takes a decent second place. I think that's a really good point uh, for him. I do believe he's the fastest lap. No, that was Toss My Salad. And so that's very good. Um, but yes, Freddy uh, extends his championship lead, which is going to be great for him uh, when it comes down to these final uh, few races for him. And uh, yeah, really, really good performance by every single one of our drivers. That was easily the best race we've had all year. I mean, from start to finish, clean racing, the overtakes, the competitiveness, the time, it was, it was, it was great. It was absolutely incredible um, by our drivers here today. Uh, look, we do have Johnny, R95, in the chat.
anyway, it's a, it's a good feeling. It's, it, it was difficult though. I may have won by 15 seconds, but it wasn't as easy as it looked. Had to, okay. It was all about being consistent on those hard tyres, just making sure like I was consistently smooth every single lap, consistent lap times every single time. It was tough, tough out there. I gotta say, yeah, you did absolutely incredible to manage those hard tyres. You're saying, I mean, you were like 15 seconds ahead of anyone, uh, but still, that is a tough job to do. I, I know it from experience, uh, battling away with those hard tyres. Uh, so great job from you today, and uh, great job for the second win. Uh, for round six. Um, Travis, do you have any more questions to, for our uh, race winner here? Johnny, was your strategy to go to the hards the whole time, or was that just kind of a, that just kind of was a per chance how the race played out? The game almost ruined my strategy. I did want to go <laughs> soft hards, but um, on about lap seven, my engineer was like, pick the mediums. <laughs> So, so I had to like change my strategy on the fly. Right, you got to watch Jeff. Jeff likes to do that. Uh, if yeah, race one, that. race one, he put Freca on intermediates in the middle of the race, and there was no rain. So you never yeah, know Jeff what you're gonna happens. get. But up uh, yeah, that's all I had. Man, congratulations on the win, man. It was a hell of a drive. Thank you very much. So it looks like we have Freddie here, our second place driver. Freddie, you still lead the championship. How did that feel taking second place? You were bested by Johnny in that racing point car, uh, but still good points for you. What's your thoughts on the race? Uh, how did you feel about those? those amazing overtakes. I got to say, you were the best overtaker um, I saw um, out there. And I think Travis has to agree with me on that. Uh, but what did you feel about that second I appreciate it, man. Um, first of all, Johnny, man, great race. That uh, that strategy, man, that killed me. Uh, but uh, good, good job uh, holding on to those uh, hearts. Yeah, man, the, I was just trying to keep it clean. I had some pretty crazy maneuvers around the field. I know you guys were, were uh, watching. Um, the two-stop strategy did end up, you know, hurting me at the end of the day. I couldn't, you know, make up that gap, uh, that pit stop gap uh, to Johnny. But in terms of pace, I feel like I was, you know, just getting past everyone pretty easily. Could have, you know, had a better chance for first place. I know the first stint, me and Johnny had a couple close battles uh, in, going into that first pit stop. So it was, a, it was definitely a good race, though. Got to prepare better for next time, though, for sure. Well, you did absolutely incredible. Uh, you've done a phenomenal race here. And also, I uh, do believe uh, you've, you're leading the championship by a amazing uh, point standings from Pepsi. Um, you're going to extend that now. Uh, of course, Pepsi finished behind you. Uh, what's your chances for the championship? Do you think you can maybe win uh, the first ever championship here at UNF 1? I mean, that's that's the goal, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's all about consistent driving. Uh, I've been having some pretty good finishes all my races so far, so as long as I just stay out of trouble, I should uh, do pretty fine. I got some new contenders, though, so I'm going to have to practice a little bit harder, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys, though. Thank you for the commentary. Thank you so much, Freddie, for joining us. Uh, t Travis, do you have any more questions before, before uh, Freddie leaves the party here? Freddie, I got... I got one question for you, and this is kind of a selfish question, but um, tell me what's <laughs> going through your brain. What are you seeing it from a driver perspective as you're about to make a move on somebody? Because not that I'm terrible oh, at man. it, but I'm not great as you are at it. So I'd I'd love to get some pointers. My my best suggestion. I'm a I consider myself a very patient driver, especially at a track like this where there's not many overtaking positions. It's all about forcing the driver into a a bad line. So I don't know if you've seen. I just force people to have a, a rough exit to get DRS on them, or I just made them go narrow into a corner so I can take the outside. It's just about you know forcing the other driver into an error. If you just you know always make up positions like that. That's awesome, man. That's what me and Jonah were talking error. about, man. Is like your timing and the way you set up the other cars. Is, it's so smooth. It looks. It looks. You make it look easier than it is. Believe me. I've <laughs> I've ran somebody over before <laughs> trying to do that. So, oh. man, uh, congrats, man. Congrats on your huge you your huge lead in the state in standings, man. You've been impressive all year. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. See you guys later. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day and enjoy the second place. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it from us here today. Uh, Travis, do you have anything else to say before we end off here at Hungary? Yeah, man, for those of you still watching and those of you who watched the replay, thanks for watching. This was by far the best race we've had. Like we both said before, it was competitive. It was close. Not too many safety cars. We had some awesome strategy, a variety of strategy. So it was certainly a blast to watch. It was, it was, a, it was. I had a lot of fun calling the race with you, man. I think we did pretty well, all things considered. Um, you did great, man. 
Thank you so much. You did absolutely incredible. Uh, always a pleasure to commentate with you. Uh, was a phenomenal race, and as you said, I think it was the best race of a UNF1 to date. Uh, I think that's going to be it from us here today. Guys, subscribe to both channels, Formula Jonah, if you're watching um, my channel. If you're watching the UNF1 channel, subscribe to that, and vice versa for both. Um, subscribe to both channels is kind of how it goes. Uh, like the videos if you enjoyed, because, I mean, hope you enjoyed it. And, I mean, of course we did. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Congrats to our top three, um, Johnny, Freddy, and Toss My Salad for the incredible uh, race they had, and all our drivers as well. And I think that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Broom Handel, uh, joined by Travis for the commentary of the Hungarian Grand Prix for round six of the UNF1 Championship. We'll see you for round seven at the British Grand Prix next, or two weeks, because we have a break, and then we'll have um, the next race at Britain. Uh, so see you there. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.